Now, welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's mm. Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. We'll start off because the countdown has begun. 29 days until Andor. What do you mean begun? It's been going on. You just well, haven't been announcing it. Well, we're less than a month. We let's say so less than a month away. from Andor. 29 days. Oh, Andor, please be good. Please, please be good. It's going to be a late night. Oh my, oh my <laughs> Three goodness. Three episodes of late night and well, That's or. perfect for you. You've been staying up so late lately anyway, so. Yeah, because I can't sleep. That's a different problem. That is. On to the news. Natasha Louis Bordizo plays, you know, Sabine Wren in the upcoming Ahsoka. Kind of uh, seemed to say that this was like her dream job. Be my dream job to play Sabine in, in the Ahsoka series. <laughs> right now the actress is out promoting her new Netflix film, Day Shift. I think, um, I haven't seen it. But it's, <laughs> you uh, think you haven't seen it? I don't even know what it's about. For some reason, my head thinks vampires, but I think I'm thinking of a different movie. It sounds like it could be vampires. Like, what do vampires do in the day when they're sleeping? Let's move on. <laughs> Interviewing with The Hollywood Reporter, she spoke about joining the cast of Ahsoka. As she explained, she got the part while shooting Day Shift after submitting a couple of tapes where she re- recreated scenes from an older movie. An yeah. older movie? Why did she do some Rebels scenes? That's what I would do. If I had, she I would did- like... How about we get in the quote before you jump, oh, there jump I the go shark again? again? Huh? I'm not jumping any sharks It's a long here. quote, so fonts. you have to be a little patient, okay? Okay. I had a scene from Top Gun to audition with. Most of the time, they give you what you audition Top with. Top Gun? Yeah. Yeah, so she had a scene from uh, Top Gun to audition with, and I played this male pilot. And then there was another scene. I can't remember what it was from, but it obviously wasn't a scene from the show. So I just knew it was very elusive John Favreau related project and at this point like most actors for my own mental health I sent off the tape and didn't think about it again I've been through absolute circuses with casting where there's like four callbacks two director zooms and then it's just complete silence you never hear from anyone again so I sent the tape off didn't hear anything for a few weeks and thought yep that's another one I assumed this was something to do with Marvel because the casting director that she worked with usually does Marvel stuff. She didn't know what part she was auditioning for or even what show. That's so funny how that's, secretive that's how you are. You don't even work. know what that's, that's the acting world. Now you're auditioning for roles you don't even know. But, Remember uh, when they used to give you the script and let you read it and then no, see if you wanted anymore. to be in it? But lo and behold, I got like 16 missed calls from my team. I was like, oh God, what's happened? So I called them and they were like, we're just as flabbergasted as you are probably going to be because this came out of left field. You have an offer. And then they were like, tell us, do you like The Mandalorian? And I was like, yeah, why? No, I can't stand Star Wars. Months later, when I met with Dave Filoni and John Favreau, John explained his thoughts behind casting and how, as an actor himself, he understands the stress of casting. We're often asked to jump through hoops when the creative people behind the project probably already know whether or not they really want you for the role. So he just tried to make it as seamless as possible, and I was shocked to say the least. So she didn't know she was auditioning for Star Wars when she was auditioning for Star Wars. She thought maybe it's a Marvel project because of who the casting manager was. Oh, but, but it's Favreau. No I mean, Favreau. She I mean, didn't know he it was, she done, didn't know it was Favreau. Yeah, I mean, obviously Favreau has done Marvel, but... She was told that watching Star Wars Rebels was recommended, but not necessary. This is good news to Star Wars fans that are interested in Ahsoka, but actually never watched that animated show. Uh, Natasha said... I think it was somewhere in between. It was like, it's obviously great if you watch the show, but the live action version is always going to be a, like a completely new and fresh thing that has to find its own truths in its current time and not try to replicate what has been created as much as honor it. It's almost like a memory book. That's what I feel Rebels is for me. It's just this kind of free prep that I never even had to do as an actor because it's all done for me. My character's memory is already recorded. So they encouraged it, and obviously I did watch it, because how could I not? So it's somewhere in between. Hmm. I get both sides of the coin here, because you are playing that character that was originally created or Mm -hmm. played by someone else. So it's, you know, we've talked about, you know, Ashley Eckstein and Ahsoka, which kind of fits in right here, and how how hard it must be for her to, you know, this character she's poured all this time and love into for a decade. It's her identity, really. And someone else comes along and plays it, and you don't. I think the last thing you'd want to hear is, "Well, you know, that's great that someone else has already done it, but I got to do my own thing with the character." So, and I get that from the the, the new well, actors' and perspective. And it's also because yeah. times have changed. We actually don't. The Sabine at the end of Rebels, we don't know what she went through between 
where we sure. last saw her and where she is currently. I mean, the whole rebellion and everything happened between. So the character will have had some growth and stuff that we don't know, but having the memories of what the character was is important. Yeah, but we have to assume that she's going to be defined by the fact that she's going to look for Ezra. Mm -hmm. and that, that's kind of going to be the whole baseline for the character, I think, that she's going to search for this mm -hmm. you know, long-lost friend, essentially. So, in, so saying that that is just like a memory book is kind of an odd thing to say when that's going to be almost the premise of the show, or at least probably the first season of the show, Finding Ezra. So I... I think Again, maybe I, she just worded it poorly. I don't think it's worded. I, I get what she's think, saying. I'm not like, I don't hate her for saying that, and I, I understand why she's saying it, and I'm not upset about it. it. It's just, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, I mean, that's the character, right? You're you're taking a character that already exists, that people have already put time and attention and love into, and you're saying, well, you know, that's it's a memory book, and I, I, I watched it, and yeah, that's great, but I got to do something new with it. Well, yes, but you also... I don't think she's also... saying that she's going to do something new with it. They're saying that as the, the show is going to... No, she's I don't starting mean... from this point, and she might develop a little differently you're, at this you're point. You're not... I mean, you're not... I'm not trying to say that she's going to do some com something completely new where it's unrecognizable. I'm saying, like, that is the character, right? That's where the character grew from. It, it, it's kind of strange to say that that's just memories when that is where the character grows from. That is the, an extension of this character. It's the same character. Mm-hmm. And I understand you're not going to replicate it or duplicate it perfectly. That's fine, but to, I think they're usually there's there's this saying like you know they most actors tend to do this where I you know I'm going to do my own I'm going to bring my own thing to it. No, I I think you got to try to find a very fine line between yes bringing something a little new, keeping in mind it's been ten years since this character you know since we've seen anything from this character in in story, and just remembering that that's who the character is. That's what what it's all about. It. She's all about finding Ezra because of that time she spent with him, you know, when they were younger. So, again, I'm not I'm not trying to criticize her or what she's saying. I, I get it, but at the same time, that is that is the very foundation of the story at this point, right? Her her looking for this friend is who the character is right now, right? Maybe, Al along maybe with, not. Well, maybe sure, she why, has huge concerns about rebuilding Mandalore as well. She might, but or that would also tie into what we saw. Or making amends for what she did. Exactly, but that all, again, that ties right back to the initial character, right? Because we know she created important. these weapons yeah. and, you know, that hurt her people. So, yes, it's all very important. That's my point. We're, you're, we're, we're saying that we're going to do something new, but at the same time, you that's, that's who you are. This is where you're building from. So, it's a, it's a strange thing and a, probably rambled about it too much. We'll let I people... I know we're not even done with the first article. <sighs> well, maybe we'll save some news for tomorrow. She was then asked about what about this character like really jumped out at her. She said, Her unbelievable bravery, spirit, and swag amidst all the challenge and heartache of everything going on. I think of their crew so often in my life now because I'm like a member of a cult now. I'm a full <laughs> fan every single day I go to work. Everyone's like, we're all just fans going to work making Star Wars. It sounds so over the top for me to say what I'm about to say, but I truly mean it. In my life, when I'm facing a challenge, I just think about the general spirit of the franchise and taking on challenges with a bit of positivity, a bit of humor, and then being able to move on. So it's just been something that I've learned a lot from, and I'm playing the role itself. Yeah, I mean, she's take that's a big... I mean, in the Star Wars fandom, maybe not the world itself, it's a big responsibility to take on Sabine because... Mm -hmm. Although I think the character started out kind of slow in the first few seasons. In season three, you know, she shines, and she shines henceforth. So, again, that to me, that's the character. I, I want to see a continuation of that character, not something new per se. So I think you will. I don't think Dave Filoni's going to disregard Well, no, of course Filoni. I, I, no, I'm not saying that, but it's always... If somebody these, else wrote it, he probably would. I think it. actors a lot of times feel responsible. And maybe, I don't, I don't know, I'm not in the business, obviously. I'm a, I'm a consumer, I'm a watcher. But I feel a lot of times actors feel like they have to bring something new, they have to change, when that's not a... We, we kind of want you to duplicate who Sabine is or who she would be today, not necessarily give your take on her, though at the same time we do understand you're, you, you're going to bring some of your own personality to the role, right? Right. Lastly, she's going to talk about how she feels playing Sabine. It's the best job I've ever done for so many reasons. I could not be happier, honestly. It's so fulfilling on so many levels, and it's only gotten better as we've gotten into it. I'm so very excited about what we've were creating. Sounds good to me. Okay. Let's move on to the next article. We still have a ways to go here. <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi, A Jedi's Return, the behind-the-scenes documentary announced for Disney Plus Day. 
They're they're making a, a new documentary just like they have for all of the have, yeah. all of the shows, releasing it on Disney Plus Day, September eighth. A trailer is available. The press release officially said this. With never before behind the scenes footage, colorful personal stories, and meaningful moments, Obi Wan Kenobi: A Jedi's Return showcases the making of Lucasfilm's original limited series for Disney Plus, Obi Wan Kenobi. This insightful documentary from Lucasfilm and Supper Club explores the return of Obi Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker to the screen, and Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen to their respective roles. Director Deborah Chow, cast and crew reflect on their journey to tell a new story with iconic Star Wars characters, Kenobi and Vader, and Princess Leia, while introducing new heroes and villains into the saga along the way. Complete with visits to the Creature Shop, Props Department, and more, Obi-Wan Kenobi, A Jedi, Jedi's Return, features the side of filmmaking that makes Star Wars so unique, the respect and passion for the generation-spanning legacy in the beloved characters. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. The other ones were good, no matter what you think of the shows themselves, whether you've loved them or loved them less. The peak behind the, the curtain is always interesting. Yeah, it's always interesting, especially Hayden and and Ewan and. Oh, um, you, I can't wait to hear what yeah, those two episodes. Yeah, I, I hope they do some, you know, some joint interviews and some play. I mean, if you watch from way back in the prequels, those two had a lot of fun. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's like these great web episodes. They, they really are from, brothers. They feel like it, but I mean, if you ever get bored or have the time, watch these. They're called web episodes from episodes one, two, and three. They're really in depth behind the scenes things. I think they might have them on the special features on some of the discs, but watch them, find them. They're well worth your time because those two are a joy to watch behind the screen too, behind the camera. I should say not behind the screen. That makes it sound weird. <laughs> Next article. New Star Wars Jedi books announced. Two brand new books are incoming for the video game series, you know, Jedi Fallen Order and the upcoming Jedi Survivor. This, uh, the release date of these books can also maybe decipher when this game is going to be released. StarWars.com revealed an original title, Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars. The novel is supposed to reunite us with Cal Kestis and the Mantis crew during the five-year gap between Fallen Order and Survivor. The book is coming on March 7th, 2023. The other book is coming from Dark Horse, The Art of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. That book releases on May 2nd, 2023. So you do the calculations. Yeah, the release dates give us an idea of when the game should come out. The prequel book being released early March, the art book early May, means the game would come out between the two. You know, with enough time to read the prequel book before you play the game... But they wouldn't want you to have the art book possibly spoiling some parts of the game before the game comes out. Yes. I'm hoping at D23's game showcase that they'll maybe throw us a, us a date. date. Yeah, I think so. But it, it makes sense. I mean, if you're going to... You you wouldn't put it out before. No. And you wouldn't want to put it out I after you, the other one. No, I mean, and you hopefully... The only reason you would put the prequel book out after if is if there are spoilers... For the you know, kind of like it gives you too much of the story, and which I'm hoping isn't the case. I hope it's it's very relevant to the game, but not to the. I mean, it can't be the point that it spoils it. I like when the books tie in a little bit more intimately than than mm. sometimes they do, where you're actually getting you know kind of tidbits that are going to be relevant to the game, maybe not necessary, but at least relevant. So, I, I mean, it, it makes sense that the book will come out before, but if it, it, it comes out after that, to me would say that there's a lot of things in there that are going to tie in a little too directly. So no, I think it's coming before. Yeah, almost certainly will. Yeah, I think we can expect the game probably late late March to mid April. Yeah, I think so. All right, on to everyone's favorite weekly segment. New this week in Star Wars, etc. I told you don't da, do da, that. Da, 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 no, stop. Da. It's not going to trigger it. Wednesday, it's terrible. from Marvel Comics, Darth Vader 26. See, special sand cover, <laughs> because apparently he's going to fight sand in this one. It's about time. As well as... His greatest enemy. Dr. Aphra 23, which continues crazy mad scientist-y things, because that's mm. what she is. She's not a mad scientist. She's a mad she's an scientist. Indiana Jones-ish character. Mad scientist. All right. Also on Wednesday, the return of Dark Horse Comics... With Yay. the Star Wars title, we are going to have Star Wars Hyperspace Stories number one. Here is the synopsis for the opening here. When the members of a Republic mission led by Senator Padme Amidala are abducted by the ruthless Separatist General Grievous, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi jump to the rescue. I wonder why. But the operation quickly <laughs> goes awry and Surprise, the Jedi sure. find themselves cut off and surrounded by an army of battle droids. 
Danger and deception at the height of the Clone Wars in Star Wars Hyperspace number one. All right. All right. Sounds like an episode of Clone Wars, but okay. Well, that's great then. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Wednesday is also the release of episode four of the Star Wars fan project, Star Wars Descendants, with the final episode going to be released on Friday of this week as well. Five episodes in total. Wait till Friday, binge the whole thing, hmm. or play catch up now. We'll probably talk about it eventually. Yes, we will. Yeah. Uh, as for the etc. piece this week, we have She-Hulk Episode 2 <laughs> coming out on what? Thursday. And House of the Dragon Episode 2 is coming for what Sunday. What was the She-Hulk thing That's there? just what I do now. Okay. I don't know. I don't... It sounded like could have been He-Man. I don't know. <laughs> Which is... And we will continue reviewing or... both series. Yes. We have reviews of... Uh, First episodes of both. The one we did late last night after right. the first episode of House, and the well, other one. The episode didn't come out till like eight o'clock for I think, us. So I think for She Hulk, we're gonna watch it at night, and we're gonna have you record at three a.m. when you're well, good. I well, you're not, not even tired angry. anymore at that time. So I'm. I, I might hope not you're be not angry. angry. Let's might, hope it's better. I understand the She Hulk comic book is a very comedic yes. thing. Yes. And you can be comedic the, without doing this breaks the fourth weird wall. Yep. female propaganda stuffage. Yes. Do your in- exit. Oh, do the, do the thing. Do the thing. All right, well, that is all we've got for you this time. So take to the comments below, tell us what you think of any and all of today's news, and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.